there could be a resolution with China. If we get a deal, even if it's a poor deal, we still have closure for the markets. The Fed is in the way. It's a headwind to the overall markets. Even if they get a little dovish, it's still hawkish on a macro level. So that's, that's the fear. That's the bigger one. Chris, your view? My view is China is more important to the market because the Fed is already baked in. The Fed's going to raise rates. And I think the market believes that it's got to happen. But China is a wild card is when and do we get a resolution to the trade war? And when we do, because I think we will, because we just can't afford to have this kind of war, uh, then it will bode well for the markets. So that's where I see the most volatility is China. Holly, your thoughts on this? I, I would agree with that. I think it's China as well. The way I look at it is the Fed is risk. We try to quantify what are the odds they're going to raise rates, what are the odds they're not going to raise as much, what's the timing of it. We try to measure that and put odds on it, whereas China is an uncertainty. We don't know what they're going to do. We don't know how they're going to respond. We like to think that there's going to be resolution coming out of the G20 meeting and the dinners that they have together, but we really don't know that. And if it's only sort of resolved, maybe resolved, or the headlines come out where we don't even know, it really isn't over yet. So I think they're an uncertainty, which is very difficult to price and how to respond, whereas the Fed is a risk. We can try to quantify that, price it accordingly, and move on. The, pr the problem is with trying to price it accordingly and moving on is that this whole thing started October 3rd with Powell's statements. So the market's paying more attention to the Fed than they are with the China tariff uh, scenario. So yes, it's affecting the market in both ways, but if we can't get over the Fed hurdle, the market cannot move higher. Stephen, just talk about the market action itself the last couple of days. Clearly a negative week last week, but it was a holiday shortened week, positive yesterday, and we're well off the lows today. So if you look at what the uh, psychology of the overall market is right now, I I'd rather be a seller of these bounces than a buy of their dips, and I think everyone would be. Depends on how much you manage, depends on what your timeline is. Everyone thought there was gonna be a Santa Claus rally. If that Santa Claus rally does not happen, what does it do to Q1? Is it worse, is it better? So a lot of uncertainty, a lot of running for the door, a lot of funds underwater at this point. Chris, are we gonna have a Santa Claus rally, and where do you stand on 2019? Well, so I, I, think, I think the volatility like we're having now for a long-term value investor like myself, is, it just uncovers great opportunities. Like and what? So, like Facebook, I think, right now is, is a great opportunity. I mean, you've got it finally selling at a reasonable enough price. That's a very it, contrarian view right now. It, it is, uh, but I think, but I think it's, a, it's such a dynamic company that's on sale. It's on fire sale. And so I think as a value investor, you want, you want to take it in when you, when you get opportunities like this to buy it at such a low price. Chris, clearly oil's fallen a lot. What's the top pick uh, with that in mind? Well, you know, I like Royal Dutch Shell because what they're, they're a low-cost producer. They've, they've shown that they were able to continue to make money through 2015. I think they'll continue to make money even if oil, if oil hits $50 a barrel, which I don't think is coming, but it's got the ability to do that. And that's just another great name that you can pick up and add to your portfolio. Holly, do you think we'll see yields uh, higher by the end of this year in, in the U.S. or if we peaked uh, for the medium term? I think the higher rates are more of a medium-term type of thing. I think right now we're stuck in about a 25 basis point range, and we're much we're right in the middle of it. I'd say on the downside, you probably could slice through 3%, maybe get to 295, 294. On the upside, I think you could get to about 320. But once we do, I think that rage broadens out, and I think it broadens out much more on the upside. I would not be surprised to see rates over that intermediate term, say in the 10-year space, 10-year rates going to about 355, whereas I don't think you're ever going to get lower again below 285 in this economic cycle. So I think the risk is the higher rates over the intermediate term than, than lower rates. And I also think you're going to see the higher rates at the short end as the Fed is going to continue on this path, whether it's one more hike, two more hikes, three more hikes. They are going to continue hiking. They're letting you know that they're going to do it. It's not an unknown thing. So I think the markets are preparing for it, and that doesn't mean stocks can't go higher, but I do think rates are going to go higher with it.